So a few days ago, I read a series called Sakamoto Days, and this series took me by storm. Everything from the characters, the art style, the plot, and of course the fights, everything about this manga is absolutely amazing. I think I read through this manga in about 4 days, which is insane for me, and I'm going to be honest, but when I was done with the series, I was craving more, so I started to search more about it. I read tons of people's top 5 fights in the series, but for some reason there was a particular fight I felt was never included in these lists, which came as a big surprise to me, as it was one of my personal favorite fights which is why I decided to make my ever first Sakamoto Days video going over this fight in particular. And this fight is, of course, Club Jam vs. Shin, Siba, and Amani. However quickly, before we get into the video, please subscribe to the channel and tell me in the comments if you would like to see more Sakamoto Days videos on the channel, as that would make me happy. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Shin, alongside Amane and Biodo, is seen running while suddenly Seba, who is using his invincibility cloak, comes to attack. Shin manages to react in time and block it. They separate from each other, and Shin can't believe why Seba would attack them. But then, we see Club Jam standing behind Seba, having finally tracked down the database. Aman explains that it was Club Jam who hypnotized him earlier, and says that Seba might have fallen to the same fate. Club Jam orders Seba to kill Bayodo, which makes Seba go into attack in an instant, and he rushes over to kill him. However, Shin managed to block him once again. Seba falls back, and Shin tells him that he isn't the type to get hypnotized. Shin screams at him to snap out of it, before he fires off his own punch, which hits the wall instead. Shin is annoyed that he can't determine Seba's location, and on top of that, Seba's hood blocks Shin's mind-reading ability. But out of nowhere, Club Jam jumps on top of Shin, and then continues over to Biodo. He attacks, but Biodo successfully avoids any vital damage, with Club Jam just scratching his shoulder. To his rescue, Amane comes by and tells his grandpa to duck as he swings his four-way staff, which gives Club Jam a clean hit to the face, but as the masochist that he is, he just enjoys it. Even Amane is freaked out. Shin looks back and asks if they are okay, but while doing so, Siba uses this as his chance as he gets close and tries to get in a punch. Shin managed to dodge in the last second, thinking that he's only able to avoid using intuition, before he sees a hand appear in front of his face which pushes him back against a couple of tables. As Shin is flying, he picks up a fork and a knife and throws them at Seba, who evades them easily. Shin gets on his feet, and both of them rush towards each other. Shin is about to throw a punch with his glove, when he realizes that the recoil of it is too much, and he won't be able to punch in time. Seba takes his knife, and is about to stab Shin right in the face, when we suddenly get into a flashback. We go to Slur's hideout, and see Mafuyu and Toromaru chatting with each other. We also see that Toromaru has changed her idol from Sakamoto to X, which is quite funny. Anyway, Mafuyu explains that rescue is going to come as he's just called his brother. Mafuyu explains that they don't really talk that much, and that he in fact hated him when they were kids, saying that their parents were clueless and always paired the two of them together. And because of the 4 year age gap, Siba was always faster, which led to him ditching Mafuyu. It even got so far that he thought about killing Siba someday, but even then, whenever Mafuyu found himself in real trouble, Siba would always show up. Toromaru is amazed by this and calls it sweet, even wishing that she herself had an older brother, but Mafuyu just thinks that Siba is late and calls him stupid. With that however, we get back into the fight and see that Siba stopped the blade from reaching Shin. Club Jam is confused and asks him why he stopped. Siba, who is shaking a bit trying to resist the hypnosis, asks where Mafuyu is. Club Jam just looks at him and calls him twisted, before appearing behind him and saying that once you've dreamt a dream, there's no waking up. He claps and orders Siba to kill Shin, putting him under his hypnosis once again. Siba's facial expression goes blank, and he swings his blade. Shin also gets up and starts to load up his glove, but instead of going at each other, both of them put their attacks into Club Jam's stomach. Club Jam falls to the floor with blood all around his face. After that, Siba admits that sometimes Shin's ESP comes in handy, and Shin just calls him a cheesy actor. We then learn that while Siba was holding the blade over Shin, they had a conversation through Siba's thoughts, as he told Shin that he would ask about Mafuyu's whereabouts, and if Club Jam knows, then he's bound to think of it, and after Shin gets the answer, they can go all in on him. With the plan being completed, Shin asks Siba when he escaped Club Jam's hypnosis, but he tells him that he was never actually under it, and says that hypnosis is all an act, which makes both Amain and Biode slap him in the head. After that, Siba turns to Shin and asks where Mafuyu is. Shin explains that he's in an abandoned warehouse in Bangkok and that Slur is probably there as well. 
But then, while talking, they hear Club Jam clapping his hands, which confuses them. But not long after, Amane goes into the middle of them and swings his staff around. They all manage to escape just in time, and Biodo isn't sure what is going on. But Club Jam tells them that once you've been hypnotized, there's no escape. We then learn that Club Jam has made Shin, Siba, and Biodo look like Satoru Yotsumura, who's Amani's dad and someone that Amani needs to kill. Amane is shocked to see three duplications of his dad, and Club Jam, a bit away, takes his tongue around his mouth while saying that it's time for him to play. Amane starts to go toward them. Shin tells him to snap out of it, but to Amane, Shin just looks like his dad. Seeing his dad makes him furious, and he swings his staff again, using so much power that he's even destroying the wall. Biodo explains to Shin and Seba that Amane sees them as his dad and tells them that his dad killed his daughter, who was also Amane's mother, which is why he hates his dad and the whole jaw so much, even to the point of wanting to annihilate both of them. Club Jam, who's behind Amane, is just laughing while saying that the pain of the heart is the most special. Biodo tells him that going as far as rubbing salt in a child's wounds makes him garbage. However, Club Jam is just enjoying this, as he says that he wants more abuse. Seba looks right into his eyes and sees that he's self-hypnosing again. He starts to tell Biodo to be careful, but just as he's saying, Club Jam appears behind them. He would have a slice of Biodo's head if it weren't for Shin, who came in just in time, which even left Club Jam shocked. Shin thinks that the vibe he's getting is the same as he got from Shinaya, and thinks that the slightest lapse could be lethal. He knows that he can't waste time here, but just as he's about to go, Siba stops him. He tells Shin that his arm must be completely wrecked by now, and that he might at most have one attack left in him, warning him that if he does more than one, he will destroy his arm. But Shin just tells him to stop with the bad jokes, and then Amani goes to attack as he swings his staff around Shin's face, which almost gets him. The staff goes around Shin's left arm and locks it in place, which leaves him open to Club Jam, who comes behind him. But behind him came someone as well, and it was Siba who held his gun towards his head and fired off electrocution bullets, which of course Club Jam is a fan of. Siba tells Shin that this won't hold him for long and to do something about Aman. Aman is in the air above Shin and is going towards him. Shin knows that he only has one attack left and that he can't afford to use it on Aman. But he then thinks back to Biodo, telling Amane that there are plenty of ways to stop someone without killing them, which gives Shin an idea. He just in time avoids Aman's staff, which goes in front of his face. After that, Shin turns his body towards Amane's. He recalls Etsuko Satoda's advice to use your hips as your axis and to use a circular motion to deflect an attack, which Shin uses now as he manages to get Aman down on the floor and lock his arm in place, saying that he's glad he paid attention in class. Aman, who still sees his dad, just says that he will kill him. But then Bayodo appears before him, and he asks Amane to think back and remember what kind of man his father was. He thinks of a couple of good memories, where we could clearly see him loving Aman, as well as the time he killed Amane's mother. But thinking back to it helped, as Amani is now free from the hypnosis. Club Jam, who currently has Siba in a chokehold, sees this and drops him to put Amani under hypnosis once again. But before he can manage to clap his hands together, Aman has already jumped above him and sliced off one of his hands, making him unable to clap. He rushes after Amani right away and says that he feels so alive with all of the pain and suffering. But before he can get to Amani, the goat Shin comes in front of him and tells him that it's over and calls him a sick masochist as he uses his final attack with his glove to punch Club Jam right in the stomach against a wall, even leaving a dent in it. After that, we see Club Jam unconscious, with Shin standing above him and honestly looking insanely cool. And this has been the fight between Club Jam, Shin, Siba, and Aman. And this fight is honestly so insanely hyped all the way through it. Everything from Seba faking his hypnosis to Amani going insane while thinking that he is fighting his dad, to of course, Shin putting an end to this sick masochist. And for me, this fight is easily in my top 3. It might be because I love Shin, Seba and Aman, but their teamwork together works so well and it was amazing to see it. But what did you think about this fight? Please tell me in the comments as well if there's anything more from Sakamoto Days you want me to cover, because I truly love this series and would love to talk about it more if you guys are interested. And if you are curious to see another video of mine, then please watch the video that will be popping up on the screen now. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.